What's up guys, Logan here. I am attempting to make my own engine for my race bike from scratch, starting with the cylinder head. And this engine is going to be designed for a race class in New Zealand called Buckets. And the whole idea behind this class is you take a slow, small capacity road bike, you modify them, and then you make them as fast as they can possibly go, and then you learn to ride them, and it, it's all about you pretty much. And the most common bike is the FXR150. That is the one that I started with, and I have got them from 15 horsepower up to 20 horsepower, and then my latest bike is 22-ish horsepower. Goes pretty darn quick, and it's in a RS125 Grand Prix chassis. But engines, no Grand Prix bits allowed. It's all got to be road stuff or things you've tinkered with and made yourself. And essentially, I've reached a wall with, I don't think I'm going to get too much more out of it without compromising reliability, because if you uh, don't finish the race, you can't win the race. So the goal for this is 30 horsepower, which I definitely think is achievable. And so I'm going to take some advice that I try vacuum casting, because all of the casting so far, where well, I've made uh, all of these really um, interesting looking castings where they're all deformed and not filled up properly, those were all done with gravity casting and there's definitely drawbacks to it so vacuum casting I think is the way forward to get some repeatability and some quality castings out of uh, my cylinder head moulds. I also need to build the vacuum chamber which this will be getting vacuumed in and then I need to be able to attach this to the vacuum chamber so that I can vacuum. And so to make that chamber, I have some 5mm and 6mm uh, mild steel plate. I think that should be sufficient, so I'll have to get out the welder and I'll weld it all together. I may have got carried away welding and may have accidentally welded all of the bottom and all of the sides. Now the top, I'm not going to leave this out as, I'm going to run some heat proof silicone along the four edges and I'm going to test out the vacuum pump and see how quick it can pull a vacuum and uh, just if there's any leaks and refinement in the system that needs to be dealt with. Righty ho, I have the vacuum chamber all plumbed in with a hose clamp as well off a of Harley Davidson so Harley parts are good for something. Right, I suppose I better turn it on and uh, see if it works. Oh wow, this thing's really quiet. I thought this would be super like noisy like an air compressor. I don't need earplugs then. And so my plan to make this seal against my vacuum box thingy, and I've cleaned the surface here, I'm going to run a bead all the way around a nice thick one. Right, so the seal in here I'm pretty darn sure is now set because I left this to dry for a good few days and yep, that looks good. I think that'll work. And my flask modifications are pretty close to complete. I've drilled some holes in it. Now the hole location's pretty limited. I've got them on three faces. You can have a blowout, which essentially molten metal comes out of the flask if the wall thickness of the investment is too thin. And just like that, the mold is ready to go in the kiln and get burnt out. Oh, actually, no, I've got to take these off. Almost everything is ready to go. I have the metal weighed out, ready to chuck in the furnace. I have a new gas bottle. I have the mold in there adjusting to the right temperature. The burnout cycle is finished. Now I'm just trying to make this gasket a bit more heat proof because I know for a fact, it said on the packet, it will not withstand 600 degrees Celsius. And so my plan is I've got some card. I'll have them soaked in water and I'll use them as my buffer to hopefully protect the seal. Good negative pressure in there. I'm just letting some air back in because it seems to. I think we've got a hole. It's going down too much. As you've probably seen, the aluminium has shrunk down far too far. So I got to 20 inches of mercury on the vacuum thingy. The cardboard worked a treat, it sealed perfectly. 
<laughs> as you can see, I have a giant lump of aluminium in the bottom of the casting chamber. <laughs> Big lump came out of that one little hole. Bugger. That did not go according to plan, and I managed to find the reason for the vacuum blowout. The sprue was quite close to the edge of the flask, only a few mil off, which I didn't think would be a problem, but of course the, the vacuum, even though there was no holes remotely near the sprue, um, the vacuum goes in the hole, and then along the side of the steel to where the sprue was and then suck the aluminium out. So I'm gonna have to definitely modify my flask quite a bit to make it a proper vacuum flask. So it's gonna need much more holes and also I'm gonna have to make a few bits of it wider so that it's at least got, yeah, that 12 mil clearance all the way around every single piece of the, um, the 3D print inside. And yeah, as you can see, that was the outcome, like overall it's, uh, it, it, it looks partially like a cylinder head. Now, the new plan is I have already printed off another head, which I have done over the past two days, because that's how long it bloody takes to print all this crap. The sprue was too big on this one, it didn't have enough of a choke at the bottom, causing imperfections. So what I've done is I have made it smaller again here, a little bit more of a choke, so hopefully I can keep that full, so I'm not getting um, extra turbulence and extra imperfections in there. Um, I have printed all of the feeders individually and just done them out of PLA. I'm not too worried about the surface finish on the feeders, it's only the surface finish on the actual cylinder head itself that's important. So yeah, I've got to glue all this together and I'm going to have another go at casting today and I'm just going to do it gravity casting this time. I did want to have another go at vacuum casting. My welding helmet decided to shit the bed and so I can't weld anything, which is just typical, but oh well. Now I have all the investment weighed out and I have the water ready to go and that is all done and I was scraping the bottom of the barrel. It was pretty close. I was having to scrounge every bit of uh, investment that I could. And now I'm going to mix it together, chuck it in the mould which is ready to go. I've glued everything together and I have put it in there. Well that didn't go according to plan. There's a little bit of a mess on the table, I managed to scrape up most of it, but yeah, someone forgot to put a bit of tape over one of the holes, and um, yeah, I, I really need some better employees, it's uh, not good enough really. <laughs> but anyway, I have put the piece of steel which was originally inside this piece, so it actually fits perfectly, back on here, drilled a bunch of holes in it, and temporarily just I'm um, holding it in place like this, so when it's upside down it doesn't fall off, and yeah, I'm about to go chuck it in the kiln, upside down. Well that wasn't the smoothest uh, casting process uh, that I've done but I got there in the end. I did spill a tiny bit of um, the molten aluminium on the concrete which really made my butt cheeks clench but um, nothing exploded which is good because yeah when that happened I was like uh oh here we go. Burned down the house but nope, nope no, none of that happened. <laughs> So I'm going to take that as a win, I'm going to go to bed and then it'll be like Christmas morning because I get to get up and open my present. And hopefully Santa got me what I was asking for which is a fully formed casting with no defects but I don't know, I suppose I'll just take what I can get. Time to start digging it out. And 20 minutes of digging later, I think she's going to come out, so let's have a go. Oh! There's the cylinder head. So far, looks pretty good. 
be fair, I can't see much of it, but... <laughs> oh my god, I'm getting excited! Amazing! Look at that. Cremo. Rightio, here is our latest cylinder head and boy oh boy is it so so close to being usable. And I say that because yes there's a couple problems. So first ones, there's a couple small holes in the cam chain gallery. Um, I could fill them up with the welder, no doubt, so that was not a major, I wasn't too concerned about that. The second issue I found was, for some reason, and I'm not quite sure why, quite a few of the coolant uh, galleries where it goes into the head were blocked. So if you look, even this one here, they all perfectly formed, even though the, the vacuum uh, you know, casting leaked, we had a blowout. So the coolant galleries, I managed to grab a drill and I could actually drill through. So the aluminium wasn't very thick. Um, so I was pretty sure with a, a small Dremel bit, I could actually clean these up and they would still be usable. So I was like, okay, fingers crossed, that's the last problem. But there was one more nail in the coffin. And down in the bottom of here where the coolant, um, so how the cylinder head is designed is there's the eight, eight holes in the bottom where the coolant goes from the barrel and then they turn into four different things which go up to the middle and then there's a donut in the middle which goes around the spark plug and then it goes off to one side and out the top which is out through here and the donut mm, I'm calling donut. it the coolant donut was very thin here and I only thought of that because this one here it has blown through as well because of lack of feeding and all that issues with this head. Out of curiosity, I was like, I wonder how thin or thick the material is there. So I grabbed a screwdriver, started tapping around where that, the coolant donut would be. And it sounded pretty thin, like when you tap tin foil, I was like, mmm. And I just grabbed a screwdriver and put holes in it really easily. And I was like, yeah, that's not usable. What this head is going to be useful for, the next step in the process is machining and heat treating. So I'm think I'm going to go ahead with those processes on this head even though it's not usable because I'm pretty sure I'm going to make mistakes with um, A, the machining and B, how I've designed this in order for it to be machined. I may have not added enough material in spots where we've gone to machine it and there's still not a clean surface and I'm 100% sure that is the case. So if I go through, practice all the different machining uh, methods and things that need to be done to this head in order to make it usable, I will find the problems that need to be fixed and then I'll be able to fix them before I cast the next one. Also before I attempt any casting I'm going to go see the local foundry again, show them this and the couple of problems I've had, see what their thoughts are and what I could do to prevent it happening in the future. Because yeah, I'm, I'm still very new to casting and there's a lot to learn. Now instead of asking you to like and subscribe, which I do appreciate, I want you to share this to people you think are going to like this and this is their sort of thing and they're going to you know, enjoy the video and maybe they're going to share it to someone else. And on that note, this has been Logan from the Motorcycle Forge. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.